Those buttons need to be pushed. And uh, okay, we don't even see all the things that are going on. Uh, I'm message is gonna. Uh, it's not going to be a sermonette tonight, uh, but I just want to encourage the church, or I should say the Lord wants to encourage the church uh, in the area, uh, our, in the most important area of our lives that is probably also the most neglected area of our lives, and that's prayer. Uh, but I brought a couple articles out. I'm not going to read them in, in detail. I'll probably do this for Sunday. Uh, but you know, for years, we've said a lot of things, different men from this pulpit, uh, Pastor Worley laid down a, a lot of great truth for us uh, to build upon uh, in this ministry. Uh, we have found many things that have worked, some other things that haven't worked, and uh, we've kind of uh, uh, built our lives around these truths. Uh, and we've known that uh, dark days would come, uh, not because of anything we've said, but because that's what the Word of God says. Uh, and as I'm going on here, if you have your, your swords with you tonight, we're going to go over to Luke uh, 18. Luke 18, uh, we'll be there in just a minute. But uh, brothers and sisters, don't think that Satan isn't out there planning your destruction. Don't think he's not out there planning to destroy your home and your job and your marriage, your relationships, um, the things that the adversary can do in our lives if we allow him to are phenomenal. They're, we have not even seen a lot of the things uh, that he's going to try and do or that the Lord's going to allow him to do. Because right now, he's still operating. Well, he'll, he'll always operate within uh, the will of God. Uh, but we have that restraining power that the uh, Scripture talks about, the Holy Spirit, uh, that keeps the devil, for the most part, out of the church. Now, He's the God of this world. He's the prince and power of the air. Uh, he runs the world system. He runs Hollywood. He runs the money system. He runs education. He runs all the things that, that man's come up with to help man. Isn't it funny, after all these years, uh, man has, uh, is just one step closer to destroying himself? After all the, the phenomenal things that have been discovered and you know chemicals that have come out of plants that God gave us, They've been able to synthesize and, and make in a factory uh, and put it in a pill to actually help us out and all these wonderful things. Uh, and yet, out of all of this, uh, what man has done is, they, is he has created a Frankenstein because man has left God and Jesus Christ out of the equation. And life will never work for any of us, as we've obviously all found out, uh, without the Lord. So the devil's doing a lot of things out there, and you've heard me encouraging the church recently that uh, the Lord's not going to be outdone. You know, we've not really seen the Lord move. He's cleaning up his church. But do you know there's already, you know, about five, six years ago, the home church movement took off. Um, some people, some in error, others uh, just following the Lord, uh, went and they started home groups uh, and uh, they turned into good things. Uh, but now the government uh, is cracking down uh, on home groups. Legislation is being passed uh, both federally and locally to prevent how many people you can have in your home, uh, how many cars can be parked uh, because you have neighbors that you, you have to be. It's all on, you know, a lot of this stuff is sold to us now on feelings, you know, because you don't want to hurt your neighbor's feelings, uh, and so you won't be able to park in front of their homes uh, if you're having some kind of, a, uh, of an assembly. Uh, and there was just a reason. Now, I, I've heard of this before, but uh, finally got something uh, in print on it. Uh, in San Diego, uh, there is a uh, local, this was just last week in the news, uh, a local pastor and his wife, uh, were interrogated by the, uh, the county, a county official actually, uh, and then threatened uh, with fines uh, because they held Bible studies uh, in their home. And uh, this, uh, this uh, official in San Diego, San Diego County official, uh, asked them, do you have regular meetings in your home? Uh, and actually the, w the wife was the one answering these questions. She said, yes. Do you say amen? Do you pray? 
Do you say praise the Lord? And so they're moving to, because the church is going back to the home, uh, but it's going back in a much different way than I think what a lot of the home uh, church movement wanted it to be. Uh, brothers and sisters, the devil's doing everything he can to hurt us, to shut down anything that's going to bring glory to the Lord. If it doesn't bring glory to the Lord, these, these big churches that are out there uh, that are preaching half-truth or three-quarters truth, well, the Lord's just going to go right around them, and they're not going to be bothered, and most of them have the money anyway to be able to, uh, to uh, pay for uh, when the tax exemption is going to be uh, dropped uh, for the 501c3 status uh, for churches. It, it, there's just a lot of changes that are coming, uh, but we're so far down the road. And the reason we as Christians, many Christians don't realize this, almost all Christians know or believe that we're in the end times, but I don't think we really realize, I don't, how far we are in the end times. And the reason why is because we're living in this time. And this is, this is normal to us. You know, we wake up every day, the, the subtlety, of course the last eight months has been interesting, but the subtlety that is going on around us has either lulled us to sleep or this is the way it's always been. Yeah, you know, those bad people, they're always trying to do this and that, but, you know, somehow it'll all work out. Well, it may not work out this time. It may if the Lord wants it to. We should pray uh, for the Lord to want it to. Uh, but just in case it doesn't, he's going to want us to be prepared. So uh, this, will, this will go on the bulletin board. I have it in my hand, church. After the service, uh, I'll make sure it gets up there because... If I don't do it right away, uh, sometimes uh, when I wake up in the morning, all of my remembrance uh, fell out of my head during the night, and I, I don't remember to put it up. Uh, but here's another interesting article that's going to go up uh, shortly. Uh, I've, I need to edit it down a little bit. Uh, the spokesman for what's called the Emergent Church. Now, uh, the Emergent Church has come out of the ecumenical movement. Um, some of the ecumenical movement is going to come back into the body of Christ. Uh, the true believers are. Um, but this, ec this um, emergent church uh, is growing every single day and gathering more numbers in Christianity, in what we would consider uh, Christendom. So uh, it's gaining speed, and its spokesman, a guy by the name of, of uh, Robert McLaren, I believe his name is, uh, he, finally they had somebody stand up to be a spokesman, a pretty popular guy now. Uh, he recently said, uh, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, uh, that Christians that believe in all this end time stuff, this end time eschatology where there's going to be problems and, and, you know, that the Lord's coming back uh, and that there's a rapture. And uh, he, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not uh, I have no stand on when it is. I hope, I hope my fundamental brothers and sisters are right that it's at the beginning of the tribulation. But if it's in the, if it's in the middle, I don't believe it's at the end. I don't, I don't think God's going to... That's when the wrath of God, the Bible, the Bible calls it, the wrath of God is going to come on the earth. And I don't think the Lord's going to have us here for that. For problems, for you know all other things, we could be here till the middle part. Uh, of the tribulation, whenever that's going to be. Uh, I just don't think we're going to be here at the end. But if you believe in the fundamentals of Christianity, uh, we need to be rebuked, he said. Uh, he said we need to be addressed, brought back down, because this is not what the Lord is doing today uh, in the church. Now, this guy is the spokesman for, I don't know how many, probably millions of people. And things just continue to just come apart at the seams so fast, right before our very eyes, and we need to be a praying people. We need to uh, let the Lord know our hurts, let him know what's going on in our lives, have a, have a deeper, more committed relationship to him in intimacy, uh, because prayer is, in the Greek, the, one of the words that's used is, is called to commune, uh, to commune with God. And if you look up that word commune, uh, the foundation of it uh, has, an, has an intimacy with it. Uh, you know, we can all 
God doesn't want us as an acquaintance. You know, we know a lot of people. We know them on our jobs, in our neighborhood, uh, uh, you know, or wherever. You know, maybe we hang out somewhere. And we know a lot of people, and we can laugh and, and have a good time with them. But those are acquaintances. And God doesn't want us as an acquaintance. He doesn't want our second place. He doesn't want our hand-me-downs. He doesn't, he doesn't want um, our, our feeble uh, little time that we now have in our lives as, as time is being sped up. He, he wants it all because Colossians 3 tells us that Jesus is now our life if we're born again. And so all of these things, and, and this is easy to talk about, but difficult to implement in our lives, especially in this wonderful country that we have, because we don't really need the Lord for much. Now, when Phil was laid off, he needed the Lord right away. You know, it, it just, these things just cut us uh, to our quick. When, when, when there's some type of adversarial situation going on in our lives, we need the Lord right away. But if it's something that's not pressing or it's not pressing for us, you know, it's okay, we can let things slide. But the Lord doesn't want us to let things slide. He wants us to have those things uh, before him. So just going to go through a few verses tonight uh, of encouragement uh, to the church to pray. We need to pray for one another. Uh, I don't want to spin any type of, of message here at the church that would imply... Uh, that life is over for us, life may be just beginning. You know, in Christianity, the glass is always full. It, there, it's never a drop under anything. It, no matter how bad, no matter how dark, no matter um, what we see with our eyes, thank God he looks at the inward and we look at the outward. Thank God that his ways are not our ways. Because if, if it was my way, I'd, just, I'd have nobody to preach to. I'd be standing up here by myself preach. Anybody catch that? Thank you. Charlie got it. Johnny got it. Okay, we'll move on. I'm not a good joke teller. so. Okay, um, we're going to be in Luke 18 in just one second. Uh, we're going to be conversing with God. It's a great story. Uh, I've been talked about it quite a bit here over the years, um, uh, the importance of prayer. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's look over at verse 1. Uh, Jesus was speaking a parable uh, unto his disciples. Where there were other people around, but it was mostly to his disciples, those that were following him. Uh, to this end, he says that men ought always, and that's you, t that's you ladies also, men ought always to pray uh, and not faint. And that word faint means to lose heart. And if there was ever a time to lose heart, if there was ever a time to just throw our hands up in the air and say, man, you know, I'm so tired of fighting. I'm sitting in my... Last night, I tell you, the problems came and they were monumental. I mean, they were just, they were just like, you know, uh, a Fred Flintstone bowling ball coming at me. And, and there was one, one part of this problem I was just like, oh, Lord, no, 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 no. And I mean, he took care of it. He took care of everything with that. It was absolutely nothing how I thought uh, it was going to be. And that's because I looked at this problem through my eyes and not the Lord's eyes. And, you know, it was a wake-up call. I get them about 50 times a day now. It was a wake-up call for me to trust the Lord, to commit those things unto him and, and to pray more. Uh, to get more involved in the battle. Instead of when I heard about this, I thought, oh, oh you know, and, and I should have immediately gone to prayer. I did pray, but I didn't immediately, you know, I wasn't instant in prayer. Uh, and uh, I would have come out of the other side of that going, wow, Lord, you're great, instead of, wow, Lord, did I miss it. And so we ought to always pray and not lose heart because there's nothing to lose heart with, with the Lord. Everything, somehow, some way, is going to work out. And the neat thing about that, it's difficult to explain sometimes because it, it gets into an area called faith or trust that we just have to step out and we know that the scripture says this even though we would never do this for ourselves because it would never work. See, it works with God. See, faith works with God because he can do those things. 
But when we have to do it, it won't work because we can't do those miraculous things that he does. So in trusting him, you know, Lori brought up the thing with, with Johnny uh, with the school or, or the class. You know, just using that as an example, that's, I mean, for a mom, you know, for a mom having to, you know, with her children and school, I mean, how, you know, there's only a few things in this life that are more important uh, than school. And so, you know, how that's got to be an issue. But yet, the Lord is not constrained by the school or the schedule or what's called the laws of physics. And if something bad in our eyes were to happen in that situation, the Lord can open up a thousand other doors that are better, that we know nothing about. Because those doors are around the corner in our life. See, we, we, when we walk by sight, we only see so far. But the things that the Lord has for us are always behind something. They're behind faith. They're behind trust. They're behind obedience. They're behind faithful, uh, faithful to do those things that the Lord wants us to do. And so when we exercise those things, all of a sudden, they just appear before us. Where'd you come from? Where'd that come from? Where'd that answer come from? Well, that's what the Lord does for us. And he does this more, or he'll do this on a greater scale uh, in our lives as we reach out and have this intimate relationship with him. So in verse 1, it says we ought always to pray and not lose heart not, and not faint. And he went on, he said, you know, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Uh, verse 3. And there was a widow uh, in that city, uh, and she came unto him, saying unto this judge, avenge me of mine adversaries. Now here's a, here's a widow. Women in that day uh, had the status of what uh, Islam uh, and all these other godless, bloodless religions, uh, uh, how they keep their women. Uh, that, was, that was the mindset back then. Uh, they had nobody to speak for them. If there wasn't a man or a male to speak for them, they kept silent. There was, because even if they spoke, their view or opinion wasn't even listened to. And so she came to this judge, uh, and she said, avenge me of, of my adversary. And so she had a lot going against her even before she started. And a lot of us today defeat ourselves even before we get started. You know, at least Peter stepped on the word come when Jesus spoke. And he didn't make it that far, but at least he took that first step. A lot of us as Christians, we don't even get out of the gate, so to speak, before we're defeated. Because we sit back and we say, Lord, you're not going to do that. Well, you'd never do that for me, Lord. Or I I'm sure that that's just nothing that, you know, would ever happen. And, and it just doesn't work out for us. And we walk by sight uh, and not by this faith. And so the Lord can't bless us. But he goes on here uh, and he says, um, she said, avenge me of mine adversary. Uh, and he said, uh, in, uh, in verse 4, uh, and he would not for a while, woman, go away. You've got no right to be here. You've got no say here. You're nothing, nobody. Get out of here. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, something was going on here. He says, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. And she just wouldn't let the judge alone. And that's how the Lord wants us to be with him. And if nothing else, he wants us to start compiling a plan, putting something together. Time, uh, if you wait for the time, you'll never get it. Today we make, we make time, brothers and sisters, for what we want to do. We make time for what we want to do. There's really no reason for the majority of the membership of the church to not be here on Thursday nights. And it's not my job to uh, convict or guilt or 
Uh, I just uh, control. I won't go down those roads. Uh, but it's tragic for me as the pastor uh, on, these mid, on these midweek services, knowing what's going on, seeing what the devil's doing, watching churches being picked off left and right, seeing the whole body of Christ literally coming apart at the seams, and people are staying home when they should be in church. And, and I, people don't need to be in church because I need a group of people to speak to. You've heard me say what the church is. Most Christians have no idea what the church is. This, this is the frosting on the cake to our Savior. This is something that God did for his son uh, as grace opened up to the Gentiles that was never supposed to be. It was never supposed to be. Now, we read about the, the prophecies or we, we see the prophets of God talking in the past about grace opening up to the Gentiles not because God planned it that way, but because that's the way it was going to work out. And so God worked around those things because it was always to the Jew, all the blessing. Faith did come to the few Gentiles uh, that are in the lineage uh, that trusted the Lord, but for the most part, 99% were eternally lost. And that begs for a whole other question that only God uh, can answer when we get home. So this is such an important part because Jesus is doing something in this format, in us being together. He's doing something in our lives. What's he doing? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? I know a lot of what he's doing with me or what he's trying to do. It's important to be faithful to the things that the Lord wants us to do. And and when we don't have this, we will look back as, as I did from the pulpit a little while back uh, when I was talking about the days of Pastor Worley, the good old days. And these are going to be the good old days, but we, we didn't have time to come to church. And I know we're a church that lives in faraway places, but we make time for what we want. It's all a matter of what's important to us. And we can buffalo each other, but we can't buffalo the Lord. And he knows what's important to us. Well, I just have to get up in the morning. Yeah, but we'll do a thousand other things that the world's offering and still have to get up in the morning. We use a lot of excuses. But that's okay, brothers and sisters. I, I've used them too. Uh, I may even have a few in my pocket left over. But all that stuff's burning up. The Lord is going to call his church He's going to call, he is calling his sheep. Uh, we're going to follow him. And all of these worldly grave clothes that we still have on ourselves, the closer we get to the Lord, and we're going to have no choice. Well, I'm sorry, we are going to have a choice. If you want to walk with the Lord, you have no choice. If you just wishy washy, you have a choice. You can go the other direction. He'll get you anyway in the long run. But the closer we get to the Savior, the more our grave clothes are going to burn off. And it's better to do it now. It's just, it's going to be that much less that we have to give up when we have to give it up. And we're going to give it up. The scripture says, Jesus said, you know, all all that the Father has given me, I'm not going to lose any. My sheep know me. They hear my voice. They follow me. Well, we're not following the Lord if we have one foot in the world or one foot in something other than what the Lord wants us to do. And he's going to get that out of our lives. You know, we don't have time for this, that, or the other thing. He's going to make the time for us. He's going to, he is going to glorify his name. And I want to do it voluntarily. I hope you do too. Uh, and so this judge, Jesus said it the, in verse 6, he said, did you hear what the unjust judge said? And the Lord just wants to hear from us a little bit more. I think moms and dads, for those of you that have children, uh, he wants to hear from us as much as we wanted to hear from our children until they started to talk. And then once they started to talk, we didn't want to really hear from them too much uh, because we knew they were there. But it's nice to hear from our children, isn't it? Whether whether they're small or whether they're grown. A phone call, my mom would say, why don't you just call every once in a while? Okay, mom. Just, Just wanting to hear. Our Heavenly Father wants to hear from us. Let's do what we have to to make the time 
uh, to be able to do this. Now, uh, over in Acts chapter 1, if you want to, uh, just a few verses here, uh, if you want to write them down, uh, verses 12 uh, through 14. Uh, this, is, this is very significant, and then it goes into Acts chapter 2, and we'll probably close with that. Um, you know, without building up the story, you can just imagine the hearts of the disciples uh, when Jesus went to the cross, because even at that time, even the disciples still felt that there was some part of them, probably a greater part than what we realized, still felt that Jesus was going to not end up on that cross. Somehow, some way, he was going to, you know, uh, those clothes were going to come off and he was going to have a big S on his chest uh, and he was going to take care of the government uh, and all the, you know, all the religious hypocrites that were running uh, the, uh, the laws and those things at that time. But he didn't. He did something that they didn't think was going to happen and that is that he died. But the scripture said that's what he had to do. And so we know that, that putting ourselves in that position, the things that would come to our mind, and then, of course, you know, he came back and, and, and how much doubt there was uh, at that time. He proved himself, but there were still a whole bunch of people out there that didn't know these things. And so there was a lot of turmoil. And the first thing the disciples did when Jesus was taken up, they went back to their homes. They went back uh, to a place, uh, one of the places was the upper room, and they prayed. Because all of a sudden, see, Jesus came back, and it was like, whew, wow. See, because when you're on the mountaintop, don't need the Lord. He's just blessing you. Uh, we're, we're just enjoying all the, all the things the, the family can afford, as the song says. It's great to be on the mountaintop, but you only grow in the valleys. You know, farmers, you know, they take a chance every year as they plant as close as they can to these rivers that overflow because that's where all this good soil is. That's where it grows the, the best, the fastest. It's the hardiest uh, brand that they can get. They're going to get more money for their crop. I mean, everything is just multiplied the closer they can get to the place where the nutrients come down. But the problem with that sometimes is that the nutrients come down pretty hard. Uh, and they sometimes wipe out the crop. Not so much with God, but that's where we grow. We grow in the times of adversity. We grow in the times where we're sitting around questioning, Lord, what's going on? What's happening? But if we don't ask, he's not going to tell us. I mean, aside from the sovereignty of God, and that is God doing whatever he wants, if we don't ask God a question, he's not going to tell us the answer. He is a very economic father. He, he, will, he will use and utilize anything that we offer him that's right. But if we don't open our mouths, we are going to be like sheep to the slaughter. And he will protect us and he will keep us. But he wants to hear from us. So in Acts chapter 2, we have the foundation of what's called the New Testament church. And that was the disciples coming together. They broke bread, they fasted, and they prayed. And prayer was the foundation uh, of the church. And, and, and that very foundation is the thing that's got me questioning about the midweek service. Uh, you know, having maybe a sermonette, having a 15-minute message uh, of, of whatever the Lord wants. Uh, however, he, in so many different directions he goes here that uh, I can't keep up with that stuff. And, and then going into prayer, maybe opening it up to certain people at different times uh, here in the church. I don't know. But the foundation of the church was built upon prayer. And I don't know about you, but I need your prayers. I, I desperately need your prayers. I'm sometimes just holding on, just, 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 just barely holding on. So please pray for me. But if we pray for each other that way, it'll also teach others that are here. It'll teach new people here in the church. You know, other people have been giving me suggestions for a long time. 
uh, about, you know, different things here at the church, everybody's opinion. Uh, I love it. Bring it on. Let me hear it. Doesn't mean I can implement it, but uh, I like to hear uh, people's opinions. Uh, but some of these things are good, you know, making it on a corporate basis so that, hey, if nothing else, when we get to heaven, we can't say, well, I didn't know what to do. But at least we'll know what to do uh, here in the church. So the foundation of the church was built upon prayer, fasting. Uh, that's all for another message, maybe next year. Um, uh, the breaking of bread, we love that, don't we? We, we love the breaking of bread. Uh, and, of course, faith. Uh, and all of those things, especially the faith, grows when we exercise it. So if we do nothing else, brothers and sisters, uh, I don't want to be preaching to the choir, but uh, I, actually, I actually thought the Lord was going to bring a message on forgiveness tonight. Well, I was going down that road, and it ended up over here uh, with prayer. These are a lot of things that we already know, uh, but he's encouraging us. I need the encouragement. Uh, a lot of times, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, things are so busy today. I mean, things are just just at breakneck speed that we miss a lot of things that the Lord's trying to show us. And we need to slow ourselves down somehow, some way. Because there is this, and I'm sure you've caught this, there is this phenomenal thing this demonic force of, of somebody is behind us, pushing us. Somebody is pushing. Time's being pushed. Uh, um, do you know, since, uh, since the beginning of this year, uh, one, of the, one of the Army, I was in the Marines, so I don't know the, the forts, uh, uh, one of the forts that, uh, that the Army has, uh, they've had 50 suicides this year. 50 uh, of, our, of our servicemen. Or I don't know if there's any ladies in there that uh, have done this. this. This is unheard of. I mean, there's, there's been suicides in the past, but not like this. There, there's been just, just on this one, on this Army base, there's been 50 suicides. You know how many suicides are happening on a daily basis? And we're not, we're not hearing about 99% of them. There, something is pushing us. But it's trying to push us in the wrong direction. And we need to put our heels down and dig in a little bit. And let's slow things down as best we can when it comes to the Lord. Give them some time. You know, God can work quick, but a lot of times he just works at his, ti- at his time. And if we slow ourselves down, we'll start to see them in the small things. We'll start to see them in a lot of the things that, that are just going by so fast in our lives. There's nothing, there's all these wonderful blessings that we have in our country. Most of them have turned into curses uh, for this country. Uh, there's a lot of detrimental things going on uh, uh, in our lives that the Lord wants out. And the more we do that, the more we'll slow down, the more things we'll be able to uh, get a handle on uh, and then be able to get those things uh, before the Lord. So let's pray. Father, Lord, we want to be proactive, Lord. We want to, um, we want to be like James, what James talks about. Father, help us to embrace uh, those wonderful truths, Father, those, those in, your, in our face truths about about buckling down, uh, about making real changes, Father. Uh, And Lord, uh, you are just a prayer away uh, from every single one of us. And Father, when we pray, there are many times, and your word even tells us that that we don't see things happen, uh, and we wonder and, and we question. Help us to stand in faith, Father. Help us to know that you hear every word, uh, that you are concerned. Father, if you are concerned, about sparrows and hares uh, on our heads, Father, then you must be very concerned about our lives, our hurts, uh, our, our feelings, Father, temperaments, uh, all those things, Father, that, that make us uh, what we are. Help us to be real, Lord. Help us to be strong. Help us to be faithful. 
Uh, and Father, help us to uh, not be armchair Christians, uh, but to stand up for the things that are right and for the things that are true, Father, because there just seems to be very little truth uh, available today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Brother and sister said, amen. Listen, this Jesus that I've been referring to, uh, you can know him as your, as your Lord and Savior. Uh, there's un- unfortunately, there's a lot of Jesus being taught today in churches. Uh, but he'll, have, he'll make his way out the back door as the real one uh, comes into our lives. But make sure you know the Savior tonight. And all you have to do is ask him to come into your life and save you from your sin. And if you mean business with him, he'll mean business with you. But things will change. You, you'll have a conviction against sin. You'll have a conviction. It doesn't mean things are going to stop right away. But your life will be different. If there's no difference, brothers and sisters, check out your salvation. Make sure you've got the right Jesus and just say, Lord, I want the right one uh, in Jesus' name and, and ask him to come in and he will. Uh, but maybe you've done that. You have a question about your salvation. This is our invitation time. You can come forward. We can sit down with you with the word of God uh, and help you out in that area. Uh, maybe there's a burden on your heart. The Lord's been talking to you recently about something he wants you to do uh, in your life. Uh, but it's a heavy burden. Well, we'd love to bear that with you. Uh, Hegwish, I'm asking, let's help the Collins family at this time bear this burden. This is a phenomenal burden. Uh, none of us know what's, what's going on. There's, there's some tremendous pressures and tragedies going on right now uh, in, in Tasha's family. Uh, and let's help them to bear this burden. Let's pray for them and just ask the Lord to deliver them and uh, he'll work it all out, but uh, it's a real bad situation at this time. Um, uh, so uh, if you have a burden, uh, we'd love to bear that with you uh, if we can. Uh, but if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, and this has produced a compulsive behavior in your life that's wrecked your Christianity, this is what demons are doing. This is what they're designed to do. They're after us as Christians. They already got the world, so they're after us. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe in his name, cast out devils. That's why we do it, because we believe. If everybody else believed, it would be a lot easier uh, for every one of us. But we do that. We also believe the gifts are for today. We believe that God heals today because he says, I change not. So if you have a need, let's stand. If you know the words to something about that name, uh, it's a great invitational song that we're going to play right now. But you come forward if you have a need. Make the time. If you need prayer, if you need to visit, if you need to talk, Hegwish, if you can stay. I know you have to get up for jobs, and uh, if you can stay to help, praise the Lord. But uh, let's stand. We'll sing something about that name. If you have a need tonight, you can come forward, uh, and we can pray for you or share with you. Please do.